let's take a look at the introduction. Winsby uses a Royalist and a Roundhead system, originally published by 3W. It is a representation of the cavalry battle that took place outside of the small village of Winsby, 11 October 1643. Section 2 is Game Components. Each copy of Winsby includes the following. One 11 inch by 17 inch map, 100 die cut counters, one rules book, two six sided dice are needed for play but are not included. Game map. The game map is a representation of the battlefield where the battle occurred. A hexagonal grid has been superimposed to regulate play. B. Game counters. Game counters represent combat units, leaders, and informational markers. Here we have an overall leader at the top. This one is Fairfax. He has two asterisks, which means he is an, over, an overall leader. Next to him is Cromwell. He is just a leader. He only has one uh, asterisk or star by his depiction. Below that is a, our, uh, an example of Dragoon units. They're identified by the D, and on the back, they are dismounted. Um, simple enough. Then we have a representation of an infantry unit right here. Their backs, backside their counter reproduce, uh, <coughs> represent reduced units, and cavalry the same thing. So on the back of a cavalry unit is its reduced side. We also have various game markers. We have the route markers, after command markers, boss markers, and command indicators. Command indicators are used to record what command the unit is actually under, which can be attack, advanced, stand, reserve, retreat, muster, charge one, charge two, or charge three. The information found on the counters includes the following. Sorry for the bumping of the camera there. Um, includes the name on the counter. It's a coordination color. It is the units that represents uh, what units are under that particular leader. So all the units that are under Cromwell will have that uh, band on them. Let me just use one for an example here. So this uh, B unit will be subordinate to Cromwell. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but they are the same color. Uh, includes name, the type of uh, leader he is. He is just a, a standard leader. Um, his command rating is lower left number. The middle is his command span. That's how far away a unit can be and still be in command. And his combat bonus is a plus three. I believe that's to the die roll. And this is a depiction of your standard combat unit. It also has a type, in this case, cavalry. The designation is E. <clears throat> its morale is a 7, and its movement allowance is a 10. It also has a subordination color, and its combat strength is a 2. Okay, let's take a look at section 3. Heading A, leaders. There are two types of leaders in Winsby leaders and overall leaders. Overall leaders are in command of their side's entire force, whereas leaders are only in command of those units assigned to them. Leaders in a unit they control are color-coded for ease of play. 1. Leader Ratings. Leaders have three ratings, Command, Command Span, and Combat Bonus. Overall leaders have two ratings, Command Span and Combat Bonus. See to the right. And in the depiction at the right, you can see the command rating on the left, the command span in the middle, and the combat bonus to the far right. Let's see. Command. This rating is used to determine whether command shit can be changed or not. See section 5B. B. Command span. The number of hexes a combat unit may be away from the leader and still be in command. See section V or 5C1. And C, combat bonus, a die roll modifier used during melee. 
Leader casualties. A leader stacked with a combat unit that is eliminated during melee is killed if no friendly unit remains in the hex. The leader is flipped to its replacement side. It is then moved to the nearest friendly combat unit under the leader's command. The previous leader's command shed is placed under the replacement leader. So they keep the same command regardless of uh, leader. Replacement leaders are, that are eliminated are not removed from play. It is assumed that another replacement leader has taken the dead re replacement leader's place. <clears throat> a leader alone in a hex that is entered by enemy combat unit or by an enemy combat unit is flipped to its replacement side if not already flipped and is then moved to the nearest friendly combat unit under the leader's command. So for example, number two, leader casualties. Let's say that Cromwell is involved in a battle with the um, uh, Royalist force and the unit he is stacked with, this uh, A cavalry unit, let's say it's eliminated. It had its last step, whatever. We move it and then we have Raw, uh, Cromwell alone in the hex. He will be um, flipped over and move to the nearest friendly unit. Um, we'll just assume that another friendly unit um, is right here. So we'll flip him over to his replacement side. You can see that his stats change tremendously, but this is the re this is his replacement leader. So, and then we'll just pick him up, and we'll just put him over there with his uh, closest friendly unit. Okay, three, overall leaders. An overall leader is used to command specific combat units, as leaders do, but also have special abilities. Their special abilities are as follows. Overall leaders stacked with a friendly unit during the command phase can automatically change the command chit of the leader. Leaders within the command span of their overall leader during the combat or command phase get a minus one die roll, on any attempt to change their command chip. Overall leaders may change their own command chip without a die roll. Combat units assigned to other friendly leaders may trace command to their overall leader instead. B. <clears throat> facing. A combat unit must face a specific direction at all times. All combat units must face forward one vertex or point of the hex it is in and may exit the hex only through a front hex side. See diagram at right. All combat units in the same hex must face in the same direction. Leaders do not need to obey facing requirements. 1. A combat unit may change facing by pointing toward any vertex in its hex. Changing facing after melee combat or while still in its starting hex during movement never costs anything. A unit that changes facing in a hex it just entered must spend one movement point to change facing. If a unit lacks the needed movement point it cannot change its facing. Facing affects combat unit zone of control and combat. Zones of control. Combat units exert zones of control. Leaders do not. Zones of control and facing. Combat units exert zones of control through their front and flank hex sides. They do not exert a zone of control into their rear hex sides. Exception, routed units do not exert zones of control. So in this case, I have placed blank blue markers um, to indicate the zone of control of the parliamentarian horse, or dragoon unit. They uh, extend into the front two hexes into the flank or yeah flank hexes of that unit. As per the rules, routed units do not exert zones of control at all. Zone of control zone of control extension restrictions. Zones of control do not extend through hex sides or into hexes into which that combat unit could not normally move. In this case, the Dragoon unit cannot enter the woods, which is indicated by the light 
pale green hex to its front. However, it could enter the uh, clear terrain to its right and or to its flank and then the other two elevated clear terrain hexes to its left flanks and front. Because it can move into those hexes, it is not allowed to move into the woods hexes. Zones of control and out of command units. Out of command combat units may not leave an enemy zone of control. The Royalist Dragoon unit here is indicated as being out of command. The blue hex or the blue counters represent the Parliamentarian Dragoon unit and its zones of control. So in this instance, the Royalist B unit may not leave or may not leave the enemy zone of control. The effects of zone of control. The unit must stop when it enters an enemy zone of control. It may not move further in that movement phase regardless of how many movement points it has remaining. Example, to say this unit started here, it goes one and then two. It has to stop because it enters the, um, the Parliamentarian Dragoon unit zone of control. A friendly combat unit negates the effect of an enemy zone of control for purposes of tracing a command span, but it does not do so for movement or retreat purposes. So in this example, this unit is still in command because it can trace through its own unit, even though it is in an enemy zone of control of this unit, back to its leader. However, if this unit had to retreat, it could not do so because it could not retreat into a legal space even though this friendly unit is negating the zone of control or not negating the zone of control of this royalist unit. Leaving a zone of control. A combat unit that begins a movement phase in an enemy zone of control may move out of that zone of control if it has a retreat, stand, muster, or reserve command and it is in command. Routed units may also leave an enemy zone of control. In this example, this unit can move out of the of the Royalist Dragoons zone of control by turning freely within the hex, because a unit is uh, a unit spends no movement points to change facing within the its own hex at the start of its movement phase or during at the end of the melee phase I believe. So it would change all of its uh, change its facing spinning uh, no move, movement points Then when it got here I suppose it could then go one to enter the hex, two to change from here to here and then three and I believe that would be a legal move. In this case however if this unit wanted to leave an enemy zone of control that is exerted by this unit and these two, um, you have to stop upon first entering an enemy zone of control. I do not see any rule saying that you can move or cannot move from one enemy zone of control to another or prohibiting that. <clears throat> so I would assume that this unit could spend all of its movement points. Well, not all of its movement points. It could it could change facing freely within its hex to any vertex vertex, and then move the one entering this unit zone of control and then change side hex uh, vertexes one, two, three for a total expenditure move of uh, what? one, two, three, four and that would put him there. He has to stop when he enters this guy's zone or that horse's zone of control. Uh, you can change facing in the enemy's zone of control as long as you abide by the combat unit may change facing by pointing toward any vertex in its hex changing facing after melee combat or while still in its starting hex during movement never costs anything. A unit that changes facing in the hex it just entered must spend one movement point. It 
doesn't say it has to be per vertex either. So technically, this unit could freely change its facing in the hex it starts in, enter the enemy zone of control, or enter this hex for one, which is in the enemy zone of control, spin two, another movement point for two, to just turn around in this hex, and just, you know, there you go. So is that uh, legal, historical, whatever? That seems to be what the rule implies.